exciting to be here. It's an honor to have Governor Christie, a great governor, great role model of public service, and a leader of the Republican Governors Association. The Republican Governors Association, probably the best-run political organization in America. Deeply honored to have the governor's support and the RGA support. It's an honor and exciting to have the governor here in Springfield with us. I'm excited to come and move to Springfield starting in January and turn our state around right here in the beautiful community of Springfield. Uh, I'm here with two pieces of news we need to talk about. One, today we got the endorsement of the Illinois State Police Commanders Officers Association. Commander Officers Association. It's a big deal, it's a deep honor. I have been going to work for the police officers in our community for my entire business career, helping their pensions, helping invest uh, uh, to have a better retirement for our police officers and our teachers here in Illinois. It's an honor to get their support. I'm a believer that we need to protect the pensions for the police officers and give them a special retirement beyond what's uh, standardly done in other pensions. Police officers deserve our ultimate respect and support. They put their lives at risk to protect our families in Illinois. It's an honor to get the endorsement of the Commander's Officers Association of the State Police. I'm also here to, to discuss a critical piece of news that came out yesterday in the debate that I had with Governor Quinn in Chicago in front of the Chicago Tribune. Yesterday, Governor Quinn finally admitted that his chief of staff, Jack Lavin, was a key player in sending in the illegal patronage hiring names that, of, of people who got hired and approving the names of all the illegal hires in the patronage operation that has been occurring in the Department of Transportation. Jack Lavin is a close personal friend of Governor Quinn. He was also a key player in Rod Blagojevich's administration. He also worked very closely with Tony Resco, another corrupt insider. This is just further evidence of the corruption, cronyism, and rampant patronage that is extended from the Blagojevich administration into the Quinn administration. And uh, it's hurting our state government, it's hurting our taxpayers, and hurting our economy. We, uh, Pat Quinn has used illegal hiring of patronage to end run the rules so that our veterans aren't given the opportunities to, for the jobs that are available in the government that they deserve to get on a preferential basis. We have also have taxpayer money being abused in the NRI program that Governor Quinn set up, and Jack Lavin is at the core of that investigation of the NRI program. Jack Lavin, uh, Governor Quinn's close personal friend. And what's happened since, Jack Lavin has left the government because of the investigations. He's trying to stay away from it. He is not cooperating, not releasing the emails that the investigators have asked of Jack Lavin and the governor's office. And now today, Jack Lavin is a lobbyist in state government. He is lobbying the uh, governor's office. He is lobbying the administration. He is lobbying in the General Assembly. And it was reported just today that um, he is lobbying for a medical marijuana organization that behind closed doors is going for one of the special licenses in the medical marijuana program. I'm calling on Governor Quinn today to uh, pass out an edict for his administration not to speak to Jack Lavin. For anybody in any department in the government under Pat Quinn not to speak to Jack Lavin. And for members of the General Assembly not to speak to Jack Lavin. He's part of the corruption in Springfield, part of the patronage in Springfield. He is under investigation. He is not cooperating with the investigation. And Pat Quinn's got to end this corruption by speaking out against what Jack Lavin is doing. He should not be making money as a lobbyist while he's under investigation, while he's engaged in the uh, process of patronage hiring that's illegal in the government. I'm calling on Pat Quinn to speak out now, tell everyone in the administration, everyone in the General Assembly, do not speak to Jack Lavin. We've got to end lobbyists who come from the government, engage in corruption, and then make more money uh, engaging in the government process. Now here, from here, I'd like to turn the microphone over to one of the great public servants in America, one of the most important leaders in the nation. I'm honored to have his support, Governor Chris Christie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm thrilled to be back in, the, in Illinois. I'm going to be back a number of times over the course of the next 55 days. I think what you just heard from Bruce is indicative of why he's become such a strong candidate. He speaks his mind. He tells people exactly the way he would handle things if confronted with similar circumstances. And he makes sure that he's holding Governor Quinn to account. 
Uh, those are things that are all laudable qualities of a potential governor and uh, I think important issues in this campaign. In addition to the fact that we've seen what's happened with jobs in the economy here in Illinois and Bruce Browner has a plan to create jobs and to revitalize the economy here in Illinois, that combined with his integrity that he'll bring to the job every day and to the governor's office in Springfield are all um, significant reasons why the people of Illinois should vote for him on November 4th and why I'm here supporting him today and will be here a number of times between now and November 4th as RGA chairman to give him the kind of support that he needs to be able to make sure that he's elected governor. So, very happy to be here and I'm sure Bruce and I would be willing to take a couple of questions. Well, Governor, you hired girlfriends, don't you? How is that different from uh, what he's talking about with Jack Lavin? Now listen, entirely different. And in terms of hiring friends, no, what I do is hire the best qualified people for the position. And so, uh, no, I don't think you can point to the idea of me hiring friends. But I hire the best people you know, the best people for the positions, and that's what we do, and that's what you should do as governor. You're given a public trust, and, and you try to handle it the best way you possibly can. Governor, your you statement. You just uh, come to Illinois and eat nails. Quinn says you just come to Illinois and eat nails for breakfast and spit them out of hand. Well, if there's, anybody who's a, if there's anybody who's an expert at eating nails for breakfast and spitting them out, it's Governor Pat Quinn. So, you know, if he gives me that evaluation, that's coming from a high source for somebody who's nasty. So are you still going to try to take jobs away from Illinois if he gets elected? I absolutely, we'll try to take jobs away from Illinois, and Rauner will try to take jobs away from New Jersey. That's, <laughs> that's a competitive true. process, okay? And our states have to succeed or fail based upon the policies we put forward and the quality of the leadership that we have. So you bet. I'm going to try to steal Josh around it, but I guarantee you this much. I won't be nearly as successful as he would be if Pat Quinn's here for another four Governor, years. Governor, how many of you back state so last November, 60% of them approved an increase in the minimum wage. I mean, that's that goes counter to the message of Republicans and, and, and to candidate Rauner. I mean, no, it doesn't. What, no, it doesn't. Because what, uh, what folks need to understand is that there's two completely different approaches to economic growth. Um, Governor Quinn aspires to be the highest goal someone could achieve would be a higher minimum wage. Bruce Rauner aspires for everybody in Illinois to have an opportunity to be the very best they can be. And that's a different philosophical approach to economic growth. Governor Quinn's approach to economic growth is government control and the minimum possible that someone could make. Bruce Rauner's is about letting the free market system work well with appropriate government regulation and to have people aspire to be the very best they can be. I don't think you have parents in Illinois right now who are saying, geez, my biggest hope and dream for my child is that they'll make the minimum wage. They want to achieve even more for their children than they've achieved. And as a result, that's two different approaches to the, to the way you handle an economy. And I don't agree with the way Governor Quinn's approach it. And I don't think, given what I've seen across the state, that a majority of the citizens of Illinois agree with it either. Governor, if I'm running for office, how do I get Chris Christie to come and stop for me? If you're running for yeah, office, how do, how do I get you'd, be, you'd be a good, you'd be a, a good conservative Republican who cares deeply about the people he represents, has great integrity and great enthusiasm for doing the job, and will treat the office as a public trust. You check those boxes. I'm willing to talk to you. What are you running for? Isn't the bridge scandal? Isn't the bridge scandal? Well, first of all, because people have had a full four years now to see Pat Quinn perform in office. That's the first thing. Second is Bruce Rauner brings a very different type of approach and a different background experience that Senator Brady brought to, to the race four years ago. And I think that particular approach and experience that Bruce has is particularly well-timed for these times in Illinois where everyone feels so challenged economically. They need somebody like Bruce, and I think they're going to call on him to ask him to serve. Bruce, last Bruce, Bruce last question. One, of the, one of the people who was raising funds for you, Bruce, at the other place was um, Mr. Bruder was one of the sponsors of the fundraiser you were just at. He was on the teacher's retirement system. He donated $10,000 to George Ryan's um, uh, fund to protect him from, you know, investigation. And Mr. Cellini apparently talked to Stuart Levine, the Fed, say, to get him reappointed to the TRS. And he was one of your sponsors today. Isn't that the same kind? He's with the Asphalt Payment Association. Isn't that the same kind of person you don't like, Springfield Insiders, raising money for you? Uh, I don't know the facts of what you're describing. Uh, we have come from several fundraisers here in Springfield and uh, was honored to have Jim Bruner be part leader of that process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Bruce, go get him. Pleasure to meet you. I didn't go to the single club, and I assumed he was not. Actually, I went there late and just was in 
Um, so.